Hello. I thought we'd do some hot foiling today. I know a few people got a machine for Christmas. And we'll take it right from the start. So I haven't even turned on my machine. Here it is here. This is the part that gets hot. And it plugs in to the base. So you just press this in. There's a switch here. You turn that on. Power light goes on. Make sure you can see it. So now we wait until it says the platform's ready. With your machine, you also get the plates that you need because you also need a die cut machine. I'll bring that into the screen later. So I'm going to put these aside. While it's heating up, you're going to get your paper ready. So you like smooth paper for good foil application. I'm using some from Hammersmith. I'm using white today, but you can also use colored paper. Today I'm going to use uh, hot foil plates from Pink Fresh. This is the Charming Floral Border, and I'm also going to use the matching stencil. And I'm going to use their solid foil plate, so I can use the reverse foil. I'll show you that when we get going. And you get some tools with the machine also. This is a silicone, silicone hot plate area, so you can lay your hot plates down. And you get a magnet for lifting your plates. So when you press it, it releases. Maybe it's when you press it, it picks it up. We'll try that when we get a plate out. I also purchased a hot foil cutter. So that's this here. It has slits to cut your foil straight with this little blade tool. So I'm going to take that out. I just keep some of my foil tools together. I have a brush and a couple kinds of erasers. So I just keep those in a clamshell. I'll show you some of my storage later. So we're going to heat up this floral border plate. And you'll see I just store mine in stamp storage pockets. And I find these tiny names hard to read. So I've made myself a few labels. So I just want to see about how wide and long this is. I think it's a little too long for the rolls of foil. So I'm going to have to do it this way and probably trim the foil in half. And I think I'll use this. Oh, maybe I'll use regular silver today. I want you to be able to see it really well on the white paper. And these are just old clamshell containers that I found in my stash. And they're just the right size for foil. Uh, you can also, if you're doing a lot of foiling, stand them up on your desk. So here's how this trimmer works. You want to see kind of how wide your your piece is. If I measure from here, it's about two and three quarter inches. I want to be fairly generous by six. And my foil is not six. Okay, so I know I'm going to need six inches length. So I'm going to turn this kind of a funny way. Get out my blade. Now this has slits, so this blade can fit through. Find my six inch mark, just put a slit there and run this through. Okay, now I don't need it this wide, I said two and three quarters. So I'll move this up and I'll cut it at three. Just gives you nice straighter cuts than if you're hacking out with scissors. Let's put this to the side. This is still heating. I do feel heat coming off it. Put this away for now. Try and keep it tidier than when I'm actually crafting because I do generally a bunch of foiling together. So I've got some tape here. This is tape by Spellbinders. It doesn't leave much residue behind. 
and I'm going to get my paper ready. So what I generally like to do is have a bit of a hinge and I'm going to stencil this. I know this is kind of a waste of paper. I'm probably going to die cut this later, but I just don't want to have any mishaps. So I'm going to make a hinge here and I'm going to put my foil underneath. I know I just cut it. Is this it? So you always want the pretty side of the foil touching the plate. Oh, and now you see my platform says it's ready. That's good. So I want to make sure this foil gets under every bit of this hot foil plate so I can even lift the tape off. In fact, I will do that. Get my foil on here. Place this my hinge and I'm even going to put another piece of paper. Now you can do this all, all this setup on your plate, but I like to get it all ready where I can see that I've got everything where I want it and I tape it down. Then I can lay it onto the, the hot area. Don't touch it, it's hot. And then you can press this bottom button and that starts a timer. And at that time, I also put on my thin shim and my spacer pad. And you know this one is the top because it has a bevel, and that makes it easier to go through your die cut machine. Let's pop that on there, and we're going to wait till this goes solid, not blinking. So while that's getting ready, I'm going to move in my big shot. So there's a variety of die cut machines that this glimmer is compatible with. They have a list on the website, but generally if the plates will fit through it, like the Platinum 6 and the Big Shot, the Big Kick, then you're good to go. So we talk amongst ourselves. I said I would show you my storage. I could take a minute and do that. Uh, because it's still manageable, I have my foil stuff all in this bag. Okay, so I'll take out some of the parts and show you. I have my plates, like I showed you in these sleeves. I have those in a compartment. I have my paper and some of the scraps I just put into a pocket like this and labeled it. Because I got a new label maker, it's a lot of fun. I recently found out how to foil some of these uh, laser toner um, sentiments using that solid plate. I'll do that in another video. So those are in here now. And I even have some really nice smooth die cutting plates for die cutting. And I keep those in here for die cutting my stuff. And that's about it. I have my foil in there. So kind of it's my foiling station is all together here. And now you see this light is solid. So we are going to gently unplug this from the base, move it to the big shot, and I'm gonna slowly roll it through. You see, I have to straighten this up a bit, but that's not bad because all my stuff is taped together. And you slowly roll it. Occasionally, depending what you are foiling you might need a shim like an extra piece of cardstock. I find usually with my Big Shot I don't and sometimes you might need to roll it back again but I generally have good results with this so I'm just going to try it rolling through once and we can put this back sit it back in here and start getting it heated for the next thing we're going to do. Get my hot Part. my little hot pad here, my trivet. Put these to the side. So here's my magnet. Okay. And then to release, I press the button. Boink. 
and lift off the paper. Oh, because the tape is held up really well. So here's what I like to do. I'm just going to move this glimmer to the side for a minute. I like to lift off the tape a little bit with my tweezers. Gently, gently. So far I haven't really had any mishaps with residue or it taking the paper with it. And then I'm just going to lift this back in case we need to do any refoiling. But I don't think so. I think it turned out fantastic. Okay, but look at all this foil left on the leftover piece. So that's what we're going to use next. Remember that plate is still a little hot. I'm just going to take this tape. There we go. So we'll put this aside because we're going to use this foil next, but we're, we don't need this, this plate anymore. So I'm going to get this tape off of it. It's cool enough to touch now. All right. So we're done with this part. Now we're going to get out this solid foil plate. And I think anybody who buys the glimmer machine at the very same time should be buying this plate. We're going to start heating that up. I'm going to put it at a bit of an angle so it's easier to put through the big shot. I'm going to put this one away. Okay, so now we have our paper. We have our big plate and we know now that our beautiful side of this foil is going to go against the hot plate. We'll just, I'll show you the ugly side. Okay. That's going to go against our paper and I'm going to die cut this out later. So I'm not going to put it in the center. I'm going to just tape this down nice and smooth. I'm going to put this on here. I should have centered it more. I want to make sure it's going to be all on this plate and be able to go through the big shot. And I'm going to put on my timer. And you can put on your plates at this point if you like. Bring that back in so you can see it. So what we're doing here is we're using the reverse sort of so-called waste foil, but we're heating it up with the solid plate so we can use that piece. Because otherwise you're throwing away most of your foil and we're going to get a great effect with this piece. Just wait. It's very impressive. I'll get the big shot in. We're done with the tape for a few minutes until we do our stenciling. So Pink Fresh has many, many designs that have a stamp, a stencil, a die, and a hot foil plate. So you have lots of choices. If you don't want to get into foiling, not a problem. There's a stamp for most of them. You can just stamp them in ink. You can heat emboss them. If you want to stencil instead of color, there's a stencil. It's fabulous. Okay, so we're ready here now. So in this goes. Doesn't take a ton of force or anything. It goes through really nice. So there's a lot of foil application here. So sometimes it's not perfect. And I might find that I should have had a cardstock shim. Just for good luck, I'm going to come back on this one because there is a lot of foil. It helps, though, that we're going to die cut it. Because then uh, sort of the background large foil parts are less important. So let's see how we did. Oh, 
it looks good so far. I'm going to turn this off now. Now there is still a clear, <clears throat> a clear uh, film over this foil, so I'm going to pick off this tape. You see it trying to come up there already. And we'll peel it back. And the coverage is fantastic. So when I die cut that out, which I can do right away, it's going to look fabulous. And this is, this is garbage now. Okay, so now I'm done with this. We're done with the hot foil part. And I'm going to show you the stenciling for this. So normally I like to rely on the stencils and just jam them in the corner of something but now that I have the outline I have to actually line up the stencils but they should work very well so what I'm going to do is just tape this down on my glass surface I'm going to make sure you can see it really well I'm going to grab some inks and I have my blender brushes I think we'll do some coral and some greens. I'm not really sure how many colors I'll need, but I'll just grab a few. I think I'll do well, kind of bluish greens with this. Should be pretty. I'll just put these on the side in case I need more. So the stencils are numbered up here, so we're going to use the largest one first. Just line them up, put some tape, cloth here that I use to rub off in between. Should be good. I'm going to start with Coral Reef. I do find the uh, pink fresh colors are quite easy to control because they tend to be quite pastel until you get to the very dark shades. And I like to go both directions so you don't kind of unexpectedly get a shadow to one side unless you want it that way, which is great. And you don't have to necessarily use all of the stencils either. You can make the coloring more simple. So there's the coral reef. And you can also build color using the same ink color. You don't need a ton of ink colors to be able to make this work. So there's number one. Here is stencil two. So this is actually a leaf stencil. Kind of got the bottom of the, the little flower there. And what I like to do too is I grab the packaging because they usually have quite a nice sample. Where have I put it? There it is. 
So you can see in their design that this, this stencil that I have here, this is a light green. So if you're ever stumped of what is this supposed to be, just have a look there. And here I think I could use one of my smaller stencil brushes. Give it a little wipe. And I'm going to use a light, light one. This one is Ocean Breeze, and it's going to be, I think, fairly blue. Just for a change. So as you see, the foiled lines are just standing in for a stamped line, but you could use these stencils on their own. Or you could color these with markers or colored pencils. You could stencil a layer and then color on top. good. Have a peek. Oh, see, you could even stop here. That's really pretty. So maybe just for speed today, we'll stop with these couple of layers and I'll show you both of them cut with the die. But you could certainly add more layers. I'll just show you the rest of the stencils. You'll get the idea. There's four stencils. This is stencil three, which gives you some details on the flowers. And stencil four gives you details on the leaves. And you see there's words here too. You can stencil words, which is kind of a different touch. Just get some of this out of the way. And to clean these stencils, I put them on my glass surface and I have some rags made from t-shirts and I use some alcohol either in a dispenser like this or now I have some in a spray bottle. Just give them a little spritz and then I dab because there are these tiny little details and you don't want them to get caught or broken by rubbing. So just treat them very gently. So now we grab the dies, just one die, and we place it on here very gingerly and tape it down. And you see, you can reuse your tape several times. So just line it up. You could, of course, leave it like this and just trim out a card shape around it, add a sentiment, you'd be done. You could do partial die cutting and have a fancy edge. All of those would be great. Bring in this. I'm going to just grab my plate. I'll use my, my good looking foil plates. I don't know that it's really necessary, but especially for a video, I'll show off that I have fairly clean plates. Just run it through. So there's the, the first foiling from the plate with some stenciling. Now I'll just take this off with the tape still on. Maybe. And bring back our one that we foiled with the solid plate. Line that up just where we want it. And notice I'm taping outside 
the plate because the tape could lift the foil and we don't want that to happen. And there's that one. Let me just grab a piece of paper to show them both. So there's a little session of hot foiling, positive and negative, and then coloring with stencils. And that was with the Charming Floral Border and the Solid Hot Foil Plate by Pinkfresh. Hope you all have a great day.